Now, seeing recent statistics on Borderlands 3, it was very apparent to me people certainly enjoy the game, but there becomes a few stages early on which lead some people to fall off. I don't for one minute think people leaving early are in fact previous Borderlands fans but are newcomers to the franchise which is good. Newcomers are just as important to this game's longevity as anybody else. Now the recent stats I saw showed people falling off at or around mouthpiece and they are for various reasons. I thought I'd make a quick video guide on what this game is all about, what's expected of a player to succeed and the steps you should be taking in the early stages of leveling up. I will also ask my fellow Borderlands 3 fans and my community to submit a little input here to help these newcomers out to the game. So if after watching this video you feel I've missed anything please feel free to leave a comment down below in which you believe it could seriously help newcomers to the game get their boots down up to the stages or just past mouthpiece who is basically the first main boss we come up against i will also mention this is not a sponsored video gearbox have not paid me to do this i just thought i'd try and help people out and that's the main cause behind this so to start, Borderlands 3 is a looter shooter like nothing else I've ever played. Full of literally billions of items, all in which can help customise your vault hunters one way or another. Now I know to start, a billion items can sound kind of overwhelming, but trust me, that isn't the case at all. Your vault hunter builds and items in terms of weapons, shields, artifacts and class mods are in reality extremely straightforward to understand. And playing this game and progressing through the story, you learn about each in a simple manner. So starting this game, you have a choice of playing on easy or normal. Easy I'd suggest if you are new to looter shooters, normal if you ain't. I mean if you've ever played a game where you have to aim and shoot things from a first person perspective, pick normal. You then in my opinion want to pick cooperation, not competition. You don't want to be fighting for loot with your allies. You want your own set loot drops. Cooperation does this. This also scales enemies to your level if you ever choose to play with a friend who is a much higher level than you. Then you have the choice of four Vault Hunters. Which do you pick? Honestly, right now, I don't think this really matters. I mean, as I believe, you will eventually play as them all. Amara is the Siren of the pack specializing in elemental builds. Flak, in my opinion, is probably the most powerful, if not Flak, probably Amara. But what Flak can achieve with certain builds is incredible. He also has pets which accompany into the battle. Zane, who is I main, is like the Bruce Wayne of the game. Smart, rich and loves his gadgets. And then we have Moles, I mean, who spawns in a mech bear, which you can run around in, which I mean, how cool is that? Now, honestly, here at this stage, I couldn't recommend a single one over another. Your best bet here is to watch a video explaining in depth what these are all about, if you care that much. I personally think you will, after playing with any one of these, go through the game again on the following three. But that's just me. Well, if you don't plan on playing this game, running through it four times, I will link a video within the video description which will basically give you an in-depth guide to each of these Vault Hunters if that is of importance to you. Once your Vault Hunter has been picked you are given the basics from General Claptrap who gives you also your Echo device. This is basically your hub where you set up your weapon loadouts. You can also see the bottom left there on the screen. This is the different weapon types available in game and the current ammo you have for each. Also here is where you create builds within three different trees. You can see your map with your current destination you are on. Also allowing you to fast travel at basically any time you want to other destinations and there are many here people. Including your home ship of Sanctuary which you'll get to after a few compare missions as well as your log which showcase your current main missions. The ones you on as well as side missions you collect along the way. These show up here in which you can highlight at any time and complete whichever one you want. So after you've been shown the basics of getting your first weapon the journey starts as a vault hunter. Now I don't think I need to explain how you shoot things or the way you should approach the game. I mean you aim, you shoot, you seek cover, you run. The basics to most shooters. A couple of additional features though. If you are downed you get a second chance before restarting. 
While you're in that down state, if you eliminate an enemy, you are good to go with second wind. So don't worry about being knocked down and don't be put off by it. It happens to us all people and a lot of the time can actually take advantage of this. So shoot away, open chests, every chest, collect better gear, equip better gear and so forth. Chests are armed to new weapons, ammo, health, you name it. So you quickly get your first shield. Shields in this game are super important to your eventual build. Not only giving you addition to health, so to speak, but also offering much towards your build in general and additional perks as well. Something I will insist on and it's something I've learned via my own first playthrough. At these lower ends of the level chart, be sure to keep upgrading your gear to the highest levels you can. I was one for liking a weapon and wanting to stick with said weapon. This I promise you isn't the way to do things at these early stages, as I mean the game really doesn't start and open up until you reach a top level of 50. That's when you realise all that gear you kept on using because you liked it, well actually it wasn't the right thing to do at all. So if you have a higher weapon, stick it on. Shield, stick it on. Make sure you are as powerful as you can be while trying to achieve levels early on and progress through the game. And don't be put off by weapons rarities either. If you find a white common item that is more powerful than your rare blue, stick on that white common item. And like I said, there are literally billions of items and weapons of such. Shields, grenades, you name it. So actually just using one specific item while you're leveling up isn't the best thing to do at all. So you quickly face off against your first mini boss within the game, Shiv. Like I said, aim, shoot, take cover and run and this dude is a piece of cake. Enemies also drop goodies too and never, if you have time, ignore what they drop. For the it seems the human you will quickly level up and unlock your Vault Hunter's skills. Now the brief tutorial it showcases you, I suggest you take your time and read this. But the basics are, there are three skill trees, each having its designated action skill. Your action skill will be performed in battle, which you will learn along the way. You can level up all skill trees though and mix and match the way your Vault Hunter performs, even when using a single action skill. As you level up your Vault Hunter, you will unlock skill points. Apply skill points to any of these trees and the specific perks they have and what they offer. Your aim is to ultimately build the best Vault Hunter you can, which matches your playstyle. Also, don't fret as you can reset spent skill points if you decide later on that your build is feeling a little outdated. So don't fret if you decide to go one specific route, if it's the right choice at that time for instance. I mean this is something we've all done and I wouldn't say it's the wrong thing to do at all. So your quest from here becomes pretty straightforward. Now what I suggest you do is take your time and try not to rush these early stages of the game. I'd also recommend you getting the most out of the side missions in terms of leveling yourself up to a level in which you are at or near that of the enemy you are facing. You will start to notice if you decide to rush through the campaign missions that eventually enemies start appearing a few too many levels higher than you and it's a little harder to take them down. So I do recommend you taking your time, doing each side mission the game offers. Side missions will pop up within your echo device uh, map as a exclamation mark. Take advantage of these guys. Also killing every ad for the XP along the way and taking advantage of what in reality the game is giving you. As I mean there is no rush. Enjoy it guys, you may as well. So the first major boss is Mouthpiece, a dude we see inklings of early on. This should really be a boss you ain't struggling with. The stats though I saw showcase something a little different and this in my opinion was because people playing up to this point were playing off course. I'd say the time you hit Mouthpiece you should be at or around a level 10. In being this level guys, you shouldn't really have any issues with this fight as long as you understand the mechanics behind this encounter. Mouthpiece is accompanied by small ads known as acolytes. These I do suggest you take out. Try and leave a few alive though, just so you are able to, if you do go down, kill them activating that second wind. The damage the little guys do here is minute by the way, so you shouldn't really have to be worried. Another thing to look out for in this encounter is the speakers. These can literally one shot you. And this happens when they begin to glow a kinda orangey red color and basically drop that base. So stay clear of the side walls and any other speakers you see, especially when you start to see them glowing. Mouthpiece himself doesn't have a shield, so elemental weapons directed at his face do great damage. If you don't have any elemental weapons, normal bullets do great damage too, as well as grenades. There are three phases to this fight as he becomes immune every third of his health. 
When this happens, just take out the extra adds he spawns in, and then continue to lay down that damage. And you will eventually get this done guys. Now these basics are basically the basic to everything going forward with this game. You will eventually unlock class mods, which have a massive input on your Vault Hunter, adding additional levels to perks within your skill tree build, applying damage bonuses to certain weapons, and so much more. And there's also artifacts too. These give you great additional bonuses, all which in conjunction with everything else this game offers in terms of customization towards your Vault Hunter, the possibilities are endless in what you can create. A loot seeking, enemy beating, absolute undestructible badass. Now Borderlands 3 to me is a game which opens up when you reach a top level of 50. But there is no true rush in getting here. You may as well play the game, enjoy the game on your way. Like I said though, within the early stages of the game, between levels 1 and probably 10 to 15, it's very important to learn the basics of what I've covered in this video. Weapons, shields skill tree builds and everything else are things you shouldn't be rushing through. Take your time people, understand the game, understand what it offers and you will love it as much as the millions of us do already. But on that note we have come to the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy it and it helped you out, leaving a like really helps me out. If you're new around here and want to step to date with the latest Borderlands, from news to guys to absolute everything, be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.